this video, we're going to be learning how to use the sorted edges algorithm to find a Hamiltonian circuit. So here's a sample problem that you might see. So we're given a graph, we've got five vertices and a bunch of edges connecting those vertices, and we're being asked to use the sorted edges algorithm to find a Hamiltonian circuit for this graph. If you recall, the sorted edges algorithm works like this. First, we're going to sort the edges from lowest cost to highest cost. Then we're going to add the edges to our circuit one at a time in order of increasing cost. So we're going to start with the cheapest edge and go all the way up to the most expensive edge. So we're going to add those edges, the cheapest edge, the next cheapest edge, the next cheapest edge, and so on, unless we would get an edge that would cause us to have three edges at a single vertex or create a circuit that doesn't include all the vertices. If we see an edge like that, we're going to skip over that edge and not add it to our graph. We keep doing that until we have a Hamiltonian circuit, and then we stop, even if there are other edges left over at the end. So let's see how this works with this example. We're going to start by making our list of edges in order from cheapest to most expensive. So notice that the first edge on our list is the edge from B to E, which costs 13. That's the cheapest edge. The next cheapest edge is from C to D, costing 15, and so on, all the way up to the most expensive edge, which is D to E, costing 31. So the way we're going to express our solution here is we're going to draw a separate graph that has no edges in it. So notice that we just have the five points A, B, C, D, and E. And again, we're going to be adding edges one at a time until we have a Hamiltonian circuit. And I find it's helpful to have this second picture rather than trying to draw on top of the already cluttered picture that we have. So since we're going to start with the cheapest edge, we're going to add that cheapest edge to our graph. Notice that if we only have one edge, we can't have either of the things that we were trying to avoid. We can't have three edges meeting at a single vertex, and we can't have a circuit that doesn't contain all of the vertices. So we can just go ahead and add that edge to our graph. The same is true for the second edge. So the second edge from C to D, we can go ahead and add that to our graph. Now that we're about to consider a third edge, we now have to worry that we might encounter some of those problems. So let's think about adding that edge. So the way that we're going to express this in the video is we're going to have an orange edge where we're going to imagine adding that edge to our graph. We haven't added it yet. Notice the question mark in our list of edges. Are we going to add that edge? Or remember the rule. We're going to add that edge unless it would create three edges at one vertex or a circuit that doesn't contain all of the vertices. And notice that this new edge from A to B doesn't cause either of those problems. So we'll go ahead and add it to our graph. Now we'll consider the next edge. The next edge is from A to E. Now that edge, if you notice, causes a circuit. So it gives us a circuit that contains A, B, and E, and that's not all of the vertices. So that's not going to give us a Hamiltonian circuit. So we're not going to add that edge to our graph. So we're going to cross that edge off of our list of edges, and notice that we erased that orange edge. Remember, the orange edges are just in our head. We're imagining adding those to our graph and seeing what would happen if we added that. Let's consider our next edge. This is the edge from B to D. Now, this doesn't give us a circuit, but it does give us three edges that all meet at B. And we can't have that either. That's not going to give us a Hamiltonian circuit. So we cross that edge off of our list as well. Next, we'll consider the edge from A to D. If we think about that edge, does that create a circuit? No. Does that give us three edges that all meet at a single vertex? No. So that means that we're going to go ahead and add that to our graph. So I'll put a little check mark next to that edge, and I'll actually take my pen and draw that edge in. So that's, that becomes part of our final answer. Now we'll consider the next edge from B to C. This actually causes both of the problems that we want to avoid. This gives us a circuit that contains A, B, C, and D, but not E and it also gives us three edges that all meet at B. So that edge is bad for multiple reasons, so we'll cross that one off. Next we'll consider A to C. Again we see a problem. We've got a circuit that contains A, C, and D, but not B or E, and it also gives us three edges that all meet at A, so we're going to cross that one off as well. Next we'll consider the edge from C to E. Does that give us a circuit? Well it does, but it gives us a circuit that contains all of the vertices, A, B, C, D, and E. So in fact, that's the Hamiltonian circuit that we're looking for. So we'll put a check mark next to that one. And this is the Hamiltonian circuit that we get from the sorted edges algorithm. Notice that we never actually got to consider the edge from D to E. So that edge on our list doesn't have a check mark or an X next to it because we never got to that point on our list. We never needed to think about that most expensive edge. So sometimes you'll need to go all the way down to the end of the list. Sometimes you won't.